When reviewing products, sometimes you come across something that's truly unique, that really piques your interest and stands apart from the rest of the pack. Today we have the Z Case P50, and I think it does just that. This is the Z Cases P50, one of the more attractive cases that I've personally ever seen. Immediately, the first thing you see is the striking, like a cherry red, fire injured red color. I think that looks really good. And also the huge glass side panel that gives you access to see all the internal components of your system. So let's take a quick walk around at the case and see what we have here. Obviously we have our glass side panel on the front there and you can see these nice thumb screws. I think those are a good touch. They feel really good and slide in easy and out. They're not too thick. Also around front, take a look there. You can see it's a full red aluminum case that goes all the way around. And then you see a space here between the glass side panel and your front panel for ventilation. So you shouldn't have any huge issues with airflow there. Also in the front, we have a nice power button here and two USB 3.0 ports. So a good touch there, adding IO. A lot of mini ITX cases don't necessarily do that all the time. And we slide over to the back, nothing really to see here, but this full aluminum back side panel can be removed. So you can pop this panel off, four simple hex screws, and then you can get access to the back of your motherboard. If you wanna install a cooler, what have you, and also see the power supply on the left side there. So it's a very nice, well thought out design on the back panel. You can also add feet here if you wanna lay it flat without the stand. On the back side, we have the cutout for your IO shield and also the two slots for an external PCI card or a graphics card. They also have thumb screws here, really nice thumb screws, but they're red to match the design or color of the case. A really nice touch. On the top of the case, you will find ventilation and a nice circular cutout pattern. I think that looks really good. And that's the overall aesthetic and design of the case. You can use this case with or without the bottom panel or the bottom foot. It is a very robust piece, just as thick as the rest of the case. And it has these nice rubber strips on it that keep everything secure and solid. This is one of the more sturdy stand-up cases that I've ever seen. For a size comparison, we have the P50 compared to an S4 Mini on the left and a PlayStation on the right. Obviously, it's not the most compact case ever, but it is still relatively small. So let's pop off the front panel and see what comes inside. With the front panel off, you can see the internal layout of the case a little bit better. This large open rectangular bay there, this is where your motherboard will sit. You have your PCI extender cable here, which sits behind where your GPU will go. This takes full length, double slot GPUs. This is the bracket for your hard drive, so you can kind of display them going outwards towards your view. Underneath this is another bracket, and that is where your Flex ATX power supply lives. So these cables coming out here, that's your Flex ATX power supply. You can have one included with your case when you pit buy it, or you can pick one up, one of your choosing at a later point. The one that they're selling currently is a 600 watt unit, and it has all the cables you would need for your power supply, um, obviously your GPU and your motherboard. There's also a USB 3.0 cable that routes to the front of the case there, and we have our power button connector here as well. And up top, you'll see a little extension cable that goes to the back here for your power, actual, your actual power cord. So a pretty simple layout internally. The Flex ATX PSU is what allows it to be as compact as it is. That may create an issue with heat as they can get a little bit hot and a little bit loud sometimes. And not having modular cables may be an issue, but let's build a system in here and see how it turns out. For components, I figured I'd test this case out with a mid-range gaming build. So we have a RTX 2060 that's gonna power the graphics as well as an i5-9600K, gonna overclock that a bit. And uh, ASRock Z390 ITX motherboard, one of the best mini ITX motherboards currently on the market. I have eight gigs of Crucial Ballistic Sport RAM there and a 256 gig SATA M.2 drive for a boot disk, that's the Intel 545. And also we have two PNY SSDs for just displaying one, first of all, and also we're gonna throw some games on there, see how that works and looks as well. So let's get these unboxed, uh, get this system assembled and see how it works. All right, so we have everything unboxed and ready to go. Uh, one notable addition here, obviously the Noctua NHL9i, one of the best compact coolers I'll be using that. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a black or gray fan to match the rest of the system layout, but that should be fine. I can replace it in the future if I need be. More worried about cooling performance than anything else. 
One thing to know about the case, when you open it up, you will find four of these, and you're probably confused as to what they are. Well, oddly enough, they are little screw-in spacers that go where your glass case posts are, one in each corner, and they raise the height of the glass front up. So if you wanted to use higher end coolers or taller coolers up to 70 millimeters, you can go ahead and do that in a case like this. So you can cool much higher end components than you would be able to normally with the 47 millimeter clearance of the based configuration. Let's get all these components in the case and see how it performs. So we have our system fully set up. Everything looks really nice. Everything's laid out and displayed well, I think. The biggest issue I had with this layout for one is where you route the cables for your motherboard. The power cable has to kind of sit underneath this, this graphics card here and also the USB 3.0 cable. The cables can be routed for the most part underneath this shell that or this bracket that holds the hard drives and hides the power supply. Everything can kind of be tucked away for the most part. As you see, there's not a ton of cables sitting there. One thing I would recommend, get these little mini uh, SATA cables that I got, little six inch guys, because otherwise they're gonna be sticking all out all over the place and taking up a lot of space. I thought the hard drives looked really good. They looked nice. Unfortunately, the logos had to be flipped this way since you can't route them on both sides, but I still think it looks really good even upside down. After assembly, the case feels solid. All the components feel secure in their place. It's definitely a heavy system, obviously with the glass and the thick aluminum, it's not light at all, but it does feel secure. That's the trade-off, especially if you're gonna have it in the vertical alignment. It doesn't wobble or anything. Everything feels solid, like it's gonna stay put. The P50 is not an overly complicated case to build in. You can take off obviously the front glass panel and the rear panel so you can access everything that you would need to, especially when you're trying to install a cooler that makes things a lot more simple. Putting the graphics card in was a little tight, but once you get everything pre-wired, you should be good to go. I didn't really have any issues there at all. The case looks great in either the vertical alignment with the base plate on or in a horizontal alignment without the base plate on a desk. Both look excellent. It's really gonna depend on what you're looking for and what kind of system you're building. Temperatures were a big concern of mine coming into this. Obviously a case with a thick glass top panel that's about a few millimeters away from your GPU fans and also your CPU cooler doesn't have the best potential when it comes to cooling. What I found was very interesting. I kept my 9600K and 2060 at their stock settings for this test. At idle, I was seeing temperatures on the CPU around 36 degrees Celsius and for the GPU around 48 degrees Celsius. So the GPU does have an idle fan mode, which contributes to that. Obviously, 
When jumping into some intense gaming, I saw the CPU shoot up to 73 degrees C and the GPU shoot up to 85 C. So the GPU was hitting 85 C and it was actually throttling down to around 1650 megahertz. So with the base configuration, there definitely are some cooling issues when it comes to running intense games and running GPUs full freight. So I wasn't exactly thrilled with those temps. I figured I would try those spacers that I mentioned earlier and we could test out the temperatures with the spacers in and see how that looked as well. With the spacers in, I saw an immediate drop in the CPU idle temperature down to 33C. So that was a good start. The GPU still stayed at 48, but obviously the fans are off, so it's not gonna see a dramatic drop there. When I jumped over to my gaming test, that's where I saw the big difference. The CPU dropped down to 68C, which is a nice improvement there, and the GPU dropped from 85C and throttling to 76C and no throttling. It was staying stable and consistent at 1935 megahertz. That's really good to see. So all you have to do really, if you want to increase the cooling potential of the case, add the little spacers, they make a big difference. And the actual visual profile does not change that much. Looking at them side by side, they do look very similar. You can even make the argument that it might look a little better with the spacers in depending on your preference. I was also worried about the acoustics since we have that Flex ATX power supply and they are known to be loud in some instances. And we also have the fans close to a glass panel which can create turbulence issues that create a lot of noise. Luckily, acoustics are one of the strong points of this case. Let's first take a listen at the case at idle, and then we'll take a listen to the system while gaming. So as you heard, under a full gaming load, not loud at all, and obviously at idle, it's very quiet. That Flex ATX power supply was kept in check the whole time. I didn't really hear it spin up too crazy loud, and that's obviously gonna depend on what type of components you put in there. If you put a 2080 Ti and a 9900K, not that you could probably cool those, but if you did, obviously that was that's gonna create a lot more heat and power draw and gonna spin the fan up in that power supply even more. I also tested the system with the panel spacers in, and it was marginally quieter, about the same though. You're talking about a difference of around one dB to half a dB, so not a major difference, but it was slightly quieter. Unfortunately, like a lot of mini ITX cases, the P50 is not perfect. There are a few issues, a few small issues. For one, cable management. Now, from the outside, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's a nice visual package, and you can route some of the cables underneath the power supply bracket, but it's very tight under there. And I also found that if you're gonna use the hard drive bracket with two hard drives, and depending on your motherboard layout, you may not be able to use that USB 3.0 header there. So with my configuration, using two hard drives, there was no way for me to physically plug in the header for the USB front IO. So I just couldn't use it. So that's a problem. That's gonna depend obviously on your board layout and what type of hard drive you use, what type of cables, etc. but something to be aware of. The second issue is the cables coming off of the rear IO. It starts with the power supply cable, which sits at the very top of the case, and it goes down to your motherboard IO, so on and so forth. Those cables just stick out. There's really no good way to route them or hide them. If you're building a system like this, you're gonna have to figure out a creative way of kind of tucking them behind the case or something without bending them or breaking some of the cables, and it might be tough. So that's just something to consider. Visually, it might be difficult to hide those cables. And lastly, one of the downsides of having a nice giant glass panel on the front is that you get giant fingerprints everywhere. There were fingerprints all over this thing instantly. And also the sticker that came on it, the warning sticker, it left a decent amount of residue when I took it out of the box. So just something to be aware of. You're gonna have to be constantly wiping this down to keep it looking good and keep your components visible. After spending a lot of time with the P50, I really do enjoy it. It's definitely one of my favorite mini ITX cases to come out, if not just this year, maybe ever. It has a really, really excellent build quality, probably rivaling even the top cases that big manufacturers make. The glass window is awesome. It gives you a look inside to all your components, really separating it from some of the more standard cases that you see coming to market. This case represents one of the most efficient uses of space that you'll see. 
The only real issue I see with this system is the power supply and the potential noise that could come from that and having extra cables dangling throughout your case if you don't need them. But other than that, it's compact, it's flexible, it's attractive, it has front I.O., which a lot of these cases don't. It takes full-size graphics card, and with the expansion little screw holders there, you can pop, prop up the glass and have it take even taller coolers. So you could put an NHL 12S in there if you really wanted to cool a high-end CPU. You could even potentially do water cooling that's listed in their product description. I'm not sure how that would work. Supposedly it fits where the hard drive bracket goes, but I'll have to take their word for it. I don't think that would be ideal, but it is a potential option. Pricing on the P50 falls in line with what you would expect from cases in this range. You can grab it for 189 without the power supply or over 200 if you add it on there. You can check out their Kickstarter. I'll put, drop a link in the description to get the official up-to-date pricing. Uh, check out the colors. It comes in silver and red as you see here and also a black. So you have really good options there. If you want to customize your system, you can do it. So let me know what you think about the case. Are you going to pick one up? I really, really want this case to get funded. It's on Kickstarter right now. I want everyone to go out and buy because it's really good. I enjoyed it and I think most people will too. So I'll drop links for the case, the written article on the website, and all the parts you saw here today in the description below if you want to check any of that stuff out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Jay. This is Tech Everything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.